This is Brandon Jones. In this video, I want to talk about our approach to learning computer programming with the Java programming language. Java, as with any object-oriented language, is a bit tricky to learn. There's a bit of a learning curve. It's not like a drag and drop or create macros thing where you have a YCWIG editor. We're getting down to where we're writing code with syntax, with letters, and things like that. So there are several approaches that are traditionally taken for learning computer programming. One is called early objects, the other is called late objects. And it kind of depends on, do you talk about what a class is and an object is first and then syntax later or vice versa? Both have advantages and disadvantages. So the approach that we're taking is one that I call the carousel approach. Now, why do we want to use the carousel approach? If you think about a carousel, it's, it's essentially round, and that means that there's no defined starting point and there's no defined ending point. And that's a good metaphor for learning an information technology. A lot of times you have to jump right in with some assumptions that you haven't learned yet. But on the same note, IT is a profession where learning is something that always happens. It's an evolution. You never stop learning. My major in undergrad was accounting, which is a very stable profession. You learn things, things change a little bit, but not much. In IT, things change a lot. And this has advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is we are spending a lot of time always learning. But the advantage is this also drives job creation in our field because things are always changing. And companies and ideas always want to be on the leading edge. So... Some upsides of this carousel approach is that we're gonna take two rides on the carousel. First time we're gonna jump on, we know there are things behind us we don't know, but we're gonna learn a little bit about everything so we can put the pieces together. We're also gonna focus on some best practices, and we're gonna to try to commit those to memory early before we learn bad habits. Now, this carousel approach isn't, a, isn't a, an approach that you see a lot. Uh, there are some downsides. So there's a larger learning curve to start off with because we're kind of sampling around a lot of different things. And the first subjects are going to appear kind of random. We talk about methods and classes, then we jump into debugging, we jump into GitHub, so on and so forth. So in summary, the first trip around, we just get a little sample of everything, like we're going to a buffet, we're just going to try some things out. The second trip around, we're going to get a little bit deeper into each of those topics once we have the fundamentals down and understood. So, what are we going to cover in our first trip? Well, the syntax of classes and the syntax of methods, those are two things that we covered in our uh, learning module two, uh, just a moment. So if we take a look at learning module two, we have essentially the, the very basics that we need. What is Java? How do we get to the virtual labs? How do we write a program with Notepad++? What's the development environment? How can we think about programming by modeling with pseudocode? with flowcharts, and then finally we got to a very high level overview of methods and classes. Now the reason for this is there are a lot of things that we would like to do in a program. There are a lot of things we'd like to talk about, decisions and loops and things like that. But to write a decision or a loop, we have to know where to put it. And we have to put our decision or our loop in a method, and the method belongs in a class. If we don't understand that, we could end up putting our decision or our loop somewhere where it doesn't belong, and then we get red lines, which means something is wrong, and then we get frustrated, and frustration really hampers the learning process. So a quick look at syntax of methods and classes, just so we know where things belong. Next, we're going to take a, a limited look at data types. We're gonna look at three data types that will cover the vast majority of things we need to do on our first write on the carousel, and that is a string. So a string is character data of any kind, enclosed within double quotes. Could be letters, could be symbols, could be numbers. We're typically not gonna do math on a string. Then we also have the double data type, which is where we can have fractional data or data that includes a decimal point. And finally, the int data type, which is purely for whole numbers. Now in Java, there are several more data types but let's not worry about them on our first trip around the carousel. If we think about them now, it's going to confuse things. Now, the next topic we're gonna to talk about is Git and GitHub. And to be honest, this is a very advanced topic to bring up this early in a class. Uh, and this is part of what we're gonna see in learning module three. But here's why we cover it. 
if you watch my videos and you're having trouble keeping up with the source code, don't worry, you don't have to. All of the source code is committed here to GitHub, github.com slash discospiff. And then for this project, it's US 16 vehicles. So we can click on US 16 vehicles and it's possible for you to clone this locally on your computer. And once you have a copy of it, do with it what you wish. Uh, you can beat it up, you can debug it, you can do whatever you want, you're not gonna hurt anything because it's your own copy and you can always refresh it. Even better news though, if I go to this URL and I end it with commits, it's gonna show me my commit history. Every time I make a video series, I commit source code to this repository. The nice thing about that is you can see the story build up over time and you can look at just the differences from one commit to another. So for example, add gallons of gas and miles per gallon plus getters and setters. If I click on this little kind of alphanumeric over here, we can see in green exactly the changes that I made when I committed this. So if you just wanna know how to, for example, add file reading and string functions, if you just wanna know what happened there, click on the little uh, number and it will show you exactly what I changed in this video. You can see all the files if you want as well. Um, so I, I don't wanna to go too deep into this because we have two whole videos to talk about this. But just so you know, that's why we're introducing Git and GitHub way, way, way early because it's a tool that you can use to see the work that I've done and then you can look at that work locally on your computer. Okay, next, we're gonna take a look at debugging and syntax errors. A lot of textbooks save this for the end, but this is something that I very intentionally put up towards the start. The debugger, I'll tell you now, it's gonna take about three times to really get the hang of it, and the first two times you use it, you're gonna give up. You'll probably say it's too frustrating, it's not worthwhile, but you'll eventually come back and you'll eventually get the hang of the debugger and you'll really like it. The sooner you are comfortable with the debugger, the more time you're gonna save in this course. The debugger is absolutely instrumental to helping you with the programming assignments when things don't work the way you expect them to work. You can debug, you can step through, you can act like you're the computer, you can watch what happens one step at a time. Now, if you get a syntax error, like cannot find symbol, we have a separate video that deals with that. So probably that's not gonna make a whole lot of sense until you do one or two programming assignments and you deal with these syntax errors. Maybe you saw in lecture that this is how we do something like system out print line, but then when you go to actually implement it, you miscapitalize it. When that happens, then you're gonna have a syntax error. So a lot of these build up with experience, but nonetheless, if we know at least where to look on our first trip around the carousel, it's gonna save us a whole lot of time this semester as we run into issues. So that's our first trip around the carousel. What do we do in the second trip? In the second trip, we're going to expand what we did on our first trip in the carousel. We're gonna take a look at all data types. So byte, short, float, long. Uh, then we're gonna look at something really interesting, which is how we can use classes as a data type. So data type means a variable type, uh, also could be a method parameter. Uh, we don't know what that is yet, but nonetheless, we will, we will figure it out. And it's interesting that we see we can define our own data types, which is one of the most important things we're gonna do in the Java programming language. Now, in our first trip around the carousel, we looked at the, the basic syntax of methods where boundaries are and the like. In our second trip, we're gonna take a deeper look at method signatures we're going to explain why that word public is there and what other alternatives can be there. We'll talk about implicit parameters and explicit parameters. So we'll get a whole lot deeper into the construction of a method once we understand what a method is. Then we're gonna talk about principles of object-oriented design, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and the like. These are things that are going to be good interview questions. So uh, a lot of depth in our second trip, but the first trip, is very important because that's what's going to make us productive and that's what's going to help us use our time wisely this semester. So don't neglect the first trip because it's probably one of the most important things we're gonna do. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this class is a, a fundamental class that is a prerequisite for many other classes like Android programming 
game development, and a lot of the exciting options that we have at the University of Cincinnati. This is a first step, can be a bit boring at times, but nonetheless, this is the basis that we need to move on to bigger and greater things. And there's a whole lot of opportunity there. So I'm happy to be part of your journey. And naturally, if there's anything I can do to help the learning process, don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you.